104.5, the team, your home for New York Yankees baseball. And the Yankees uh, making some moves. A lot of people I know here in the Capital Region have been concerned that maybe the price we're paying for some of these guys a little too high. So why not reach out to the man who covers the Rail Riders, the Yankees AAA affiliate for TL News. It is Mr. DJ Eberly. DJ, what, what, is, what price have we paid from the farm system? Well, you know, I, I will admit the price – Especially, I think, for Jay Happ was a bit steep. Uh, Brandon Jury is a serviceable third baseman. Um, someone who, you know, he got Wally Pipps this year. I mean, he was – he got injured. Well, I don't, know, I don't know if you want to call it injured, but he revealed, uh, you know, that something was going on with him with the blurry vision and the, the migraines that he wanted to get taken care of. And good for him because life is more than just baseball. And they gave up Billy McKinney as well, who is a very talented outfielder. Uh, got some time with the Yankees this year, and at worst, he's like your he's your fourth outfielder on a really good baseball team. So I think that I mean, but you, you, obviously, you know, you're training for the J half that is really good against the Red Sox this season, and he pitched really well yesterday for the Yankees. So I mean, you're getting a guy that's won a World Series ring, that's been there, he's been around the block, he's a veteran. Uh, but I, I think that price is steep when you look at Zach Britton. I mean, they're they're trading for him to help bolster that bullpen, so it gives him the flexibility and. Brian Cashman has said this, uh, bring up guys like Justice Sheffield or some of the younger guys, Luis Sessa, that may only give you five innings, but this way you have four legitimate closers um, and then a bunch of other good, really good relievers. I mean, this team already had the best bullpen, so why not fortify it? And, you know, you're training Dylan Tate, who was a stud. I never got to see him pitch, but he's really good. Um, it was probably going to be really good. I think he was better suited as a reliever than a starting pitcher, and if he was a reliever, he could have made an impact possibly this year. Um, and then you also are trading him for uh, Cody Carroll, who is in International League, which is the league that the AAA affiliate, the Rail Riders, plays in. Um, he's an all-star this year. He's in AAA all stream. And Josh Rogers, who leads the Rail Riders in innings this season. So, I mean, you get, you're giving up three good pieces. At, at, and then, you know, what I've been talking about, the two trades that happened yesterday, uh, when they traded for with the Cardinals, they traded two relievers, Jason Shreve, who's up with the Yankees, Giovanni Gallego, who was really that extra bullpen arm, that flip flop between the Yankees and Rail Riders a lot this season for uh, an international signing bo- a bonus, pool money, and uh, first baseman Luke Voigt. I think that's how you say his last name. I'm going to go with it. <laughs> and then they also traded another reliever who was with the Rail Riders, just made his first appearance of the season with the Rail Riders early, uh, early this week, just a couple of days ago, Caleb Frere. Um, the White Sox again for international signing bonus pool money, and a lot of this is the trade. You're seeing a lot of guys go, a lot of guys who are making impacts and could make impacts. But the problem is, they have so many talented players, especially at the upper levels, that you need to think about the 40 man. You need to think about the future, and they were going to lose a lot of these guys to Rule Five Draft, which is in December. Which you can you can uh, select guys for like and you don't you have to pay the Yankees money or whatever team that. Are el- they're like certain eligible, like you've been in the system for so long, you haven't put on the, for- the 40 man yet, you're eligible. I mean, they got a lot of those types of guys available this, this winter, so a lot of it is you're trying to trade them to get something back before you lose them for $50,000. DJ Everly with us right now. He covers the Rail Riders. He's Cap Region guy. So, DJ, I've got this weird theory, and one of the names that we kind of thought we'd hear as we got closer to the trade deadline was Clint Frazier. Clint Frazier yep. gets dinged up again with the migraines, whatever. He can't. He, he's not tradable. All of a sudden, Aaron Judge gets hurt, and Clint Frazier looks pretty healthy. Was there a little? Was there a little acting going on? Maybe. I don't think so. Okay. He, uh, yeah, no. He, he came in. What was it? It was like Wednesday. I think he, he just. He showed up at the Rail Riders clubhouse. He was on the Yankees DL, which I felt odd. And then he's, a, I mean, he's a great, he's a great guy. So we, we had the chance to talk to him. And basically what's going on is he has these migraine, migraines and a, and a little blurry vision from the concussion. It's called post-concussion migraines. And it's not like Brandon Jury per se, where it's like a constant thing. Like he'll wake up, be a little bit foggy and it'll get better throughout the day goes, but then something can pop up. And, he, I know, has gone down to Tampa to continue his rehab. It is a shame. It's, I mean, it's really it's, – it's poor timing for the guy. I mean, it's been an up-and-down season for him with the for original concussion. And, you know, that cost him a month where they, they frankly, quite frankly, could have used him. Uh, it got to the point where he, he could have been there. Right now they could use him. He'd probably be starting every day. And since it's Shane Robinson who's been, uh, been starting for uh, – he's been starting and working himself in as that fourth outfielder, which is what it is right now. 
Uh, but, I mean, this is a guy who wants to go out there, but, I mean, he told us, you know, a couple days ago, you know, right now it's a concussion, and it's not, it's not like it's a, an ankle. So he's just, you know, looking to get, you know, he wants to get back, and he wants to put his health first, and he wants to make he's 100% sure he's ready before he's, you know, back into the fold because he doesn't want to – something he's stressed. He doesn't want to get a couple of concussions in only a few months span. I mean, that's really bad. Especially when you look at, you know, the the future and and because this guy he's only a 22, 23, so he's got a big ceiling ahead of him. So he I, he's just trying to get right, and you know he's he's making sure he's ready before he returns. But I, I think I I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him trying out there in a week or two. The last time we spoke, one of the questions was, "Where in the world is Ronald Torres?" Rumors have it he's actually been found. Yeah, so he's been he's played four games with IA Tampa. Um, I, 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 this all, I know that his wife, his wife has been sick. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where, how I haven't heard. It's, it's a very vague situation and we haven't been told much more than the fact that his wife has been sick. He left to be with her and like now he's playing in Tampa. So I, I don't know what to make from it. You just hope that she is okay. Uh, and this has just been quite the season for Ronald Torres. 104.5, the team, your home for New York Yankees baseball. DJ Eberly with us right now. DJ, real quick, while we're, while we're talking, I'm seeing news go by that the Rays scouts are looking at Justice Sheffield and that he could actually be a part in a Chris Archer or Zach Wheeler deal. Are you hearing anything yeah. where he might actually be movable now? I don't know. I, I, I think that I don't think that they – I think that they would try and not trade him. Um, and, and the thing about that is, like, yeah, are Rays scouts at the game? Yeah, but there was, there's been, like – there's like 15 scouts on hand every game of the Rail Riders homestand this past week. And it wasn't just when he was starting. And was it to scout them or was it to scout the Braves, who also had, you know, has a really good farm system and has a lot of good players out there? I, if I'm the Yankees, I'm not sure if I trade Justin Sheffield, even for Chris Archer. Believe it or not, I didn't realize this. Chris Archer is 29. So, I mean, you really want to trade a 22, 23 year old who has Chris Archer potential and could help this team out at some point this season. I don't know if the Yankees want to do that. I mean, I think there's other places you can go in the farm system to make this trade work. But, and for Zach Wheeler, I definitely wouldn't trade him for Zach Wheeler. Any update on the rehab possible assignments of Gary Sanchez and Aaron Judge in the next few months? I Well, I, I believe they, people think that Aaron Judge is only a couple weeks away. I mean, I think he's been out for, what, about a week now, maybe a little less. And I think that they, they think that it was really realistic that it was – you know, a, a three week turnaround. So I would I would say mid to late August we could see Aaron Judge making his way to a rehab assignment and then I think Gary Sanchez is right behind him late August to early September. Which great which just really aligns perfectly with the Rail Riders season as they're trying to make <laughs> a playoff push and it lines up with the with the Governor's Cup playoffs. Uh that would be interesting to see uh, those two guys who were big who played big roles in the team winning the national triple A national championship in 2016, back again, helping the Rail Riders get back to the Governor's Cup Finals. And now DJ, like me, is a young sports broadcaster with his phone constantly on him, and he texted yeah, me about... 1.05 in the morning. That's right, one oh five in the morning about Josh Allen. How? What happened, dude? <laughs> All right, so one of my buddies who... Uh, shout out to James Costanzo. He has, he, both of us worked together at Saratoga and Troy Record a few years ago, and we used to stay in contact. He's a Jets fan, so... We have been going back and forth about Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, and just how we hope that our two franchises turn it around and they take over the AFC East and, you know, and throw down, you know, the Patriots. So, like, so I've been talking about how I, Josh Allen, from what everything I've read, and this is how I spend a lot of my, my afternoons following along how training camp's going. I'm actually going to the training camp on Wednesday because the Rail Riders are playing in Rochester, so it lines up perfectly. And um, so I was letting him know that Josh Allen continuing to be great. Uh, and, yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a mistake on my part. But, you know, it's funny with Josh Allen. I mean, I, I wasn't the biggest Josh Allen fan going into this, but uh, I quickly turned the page because the guy is just throwing bombs in training camp. And, you know, you take the lumps with uh, the great throws and the chance of the fact that he can help the Bills score a touchdown anytime he touches the ball. So, yeah. Uh, that was, yep, and I'm just going to show you, I'm up to like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Every, every morning. So, <laughs> DJ, you shouldn't feel bad at all because 
Uh, Gaz has a history of, of sending texts to the wrong people as well. As, <laughs> as you know, his beautiful wife's name is Jordan. Well, Jordan Rodon is our insider reporter for ESPN for, right. the, for the Giants. <laughs> well, Gaz decided to update Jordan, his wife, on his bathroom habits one day. <laughs> But he didn't check which Jordan he sent it to. So Jordan from the Giants, uh, from ESPN uh, headquarters, uh, got a full update on how how Zach uh, how Gaz's uh, bathroom yeah. was going that day. Yeah, he did. So don't feel as bad, DJ. All right, just always think before you tweet or text. We learned that in yeah, our twenties. Right? Right? Always, yeah. as Herm Edwards said, it was like, don't what, wait, don't, don't press, press send. send. That's like his catchphrase. Don't yeah. press send. Uh, DJ man, we appreciate you. Thank you so much, and we'll be hitting you up soon. Hi <laughs> right, guys.